So then we had the uh, SmackDown show, which uh, you just finished watching. And the story of the show was basically setting up L.A. Night for Roman Reigns. Yep. At some point, uh, whether it's going to be in Saudi Arabia Crown or... Crown Jewel. Yeah, it's Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel, so... Yeah. Yeah. Because they... the, um, the other one, I think, is going to end up being War Games, the Survivor Series. Oh, Survivor Series War Games? Well, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, show open with John Cena coming out, and John Cena's role at this point is to endorse L.A. Knight for this uh, upcoming match with Roman Reigns. So uh, Roman Reigns came out, and uh, they talked for a while before L.A. Knight's music hit, and crowd was going crazy for L.A. Knight. And Roman basically said, who the hell do you think you are? L.A. said he was the fastest rising star in SmackDown history. Jimmy Uso jumped him from behind. L.A. turned the tables, tossed him outside, got in Roman's face. Roman left the ring. And then Roman told Cena, forget about Cena, handle L.A. Knight. And so that was set up for the main event. We had Pretty Deadly's first match back since Elton's shoulder injury. They beat the Brawling Brutes. And uh, they did the old Elton sells the knee injury. Nobody in the crowd bought it. And then Kit booted Ridge. Okay, you know what's you know what's, what's what's completely stupid in that spot is the match is going on, okay, and he's doing the fake knee injury, and the ref goes in there, and like if the guy can't continue, and the ref thinks that the guy can't continue, he's injured. Isn't that like the match should be over? It should end. I mean, I'm watching this going like she won't let Ridge Holland near him or attack him. And it's like, okay, if you don't let him attack, that means the match should be over. Well, the uh, what the hell was the match? What was the last best of three? Falls I mean, they've done that before. Saw? Don't don't get me wrong; it's been done before in wrestling, but it makes no sense. Like if if the guy is too injured and you have to stop the match, the match is over, you know. But you know they're doing this, and it's like Ridge Holland goes, "Come on," to the ref, like you can't be f falling for this. So it's like it wasn't even done in a manner like. To, to fool the fans at all. They were not even looking at fooling the fans. They only made the ref look completely stupid because the ref is the only person who is buying this knee injury. And, you know, she, whatever, she, you know, Jessica Carr just stops the match but doesn't end the match. And then uh, uh, Kit Wilson kicks Ridge Holland because he's not paying attention even though he's not the legal man and it's behind her back. And then the guy jumps in and cradles him and she counts the pin. And even if like, you know, it just doesn't make sense at all, but it is wrestling. And... What was the, uh, what was the last best of three falls match we just saw where the guy did the uh, frog splash onto the stretcher off the post? The hell yes. match was that? Uh, the, the two out of three. Yeah. What was that? Uh, Christian cage and Darby. Allen. That's right. Christian and Darby. So yeah, that was that was the same thing. It's like Darby Darby does the injury in a best of three falls match, and they literally bring out the stretcher and they put him on the stretcher to bring him to the back, and they didn't stop the match. Like and that did, that that was ridiculous too. Yeah, but that that one I really couldn't figure out. Like if this were real, the guy is being stretchered away from a best of three falls match, and there's no one else in the match. Why is this match still going on? Right. But they let it go on, and then he came back, and that was that. Yeah. Anyway, Lashley met with Carlito. And uh, the Street Profits ended up laying out Carlito. So it looks like Carlito and Lashley will be Carlito's first big match. And uh, then we had... Uh, I'll tell you what. Like, when we talked about the Street Profits a couple weeks ago, or about oh, maybe yes. it was a week and a half ago, it's, it's all that and more. It's like they are nothing. They're background they're characters with no they're, charisma at this they're point. They're two dudes in suits with, that with, like, they've lost... 85% of their charisma. Yeah. yeah. I think that, that this is a bad idea compared to what they were doing before. Well, I mean, they could turn him heel and put him with Lashley and and do it in a manner that's different than this. But, yeah, the two dudes in suits is is not the right thing for them at all. No. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you could make him, like, really obnoxious guys, but the suits thing, like, the I'm sure the suits idea is to make, you know, kind of have you have heat because... You want them to be this other character, so you're mad about it. But I'm watching this going, I'm not mad, I'm just bored. This isn't working for them. I mean, you know, it's just, you know, they're trying, like, the, you know, it's like, it's they, they want to redo the hurt business, 
and you know they've established that Sh- Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin's gone, and Cedric Alexander, you know, is one of those guys who hopefully like uh, threw his cell phone in the ocean because he could be gone at any minute. You know, I mean, after the last couple of, you know, the last time he was on TV, his prospects don't look good there at all. So they're looking for guys for this new hurt business thing. And it's like, well, we got the street profits. It's like, yeah, but it's not the right fit to put those dudes in suits. So we had a segment with Roman and Paul and Jimmy and everybody solo backstage and, Long story short, you can see where this is going, and that is that Roman is getting increasingly irritated by Jimmy. Jimmy wants Jay back, but Roman wants nothing to do with Jay. So I think ultimately, at some point down the road, Jimmy is also going to turn babyface. And uh, be here one, he did one less guy. Well, now he's a heel. I mean, we're talking like he'll leave the bloodline at some point. Well, he already did, and then he came back. I know. We gotta we gotta stretch this out through Mania. Yeah, we're only in the third inning. Roman does not like Yeet. Yeah. He's getting more pissed off every time Jimmy says it. We had uh, Bailey beating Zelina. It was like a minute. It's totally pointless. Just beat her. And then Damage Control went after Zelina afterwards. And they had well, that Charlotte. Was, wasn't, wasn't that, uh, you know, the distraction from EO? Yes. EO, EO distracted. It was a he, minute. It's it's irrelevant. And and then like a face plan, and then Charlotte comes in. Charlotte these, is wearing these, these giant, giant heels. Like it, you're doing a run in, in giant heels is the most awkward thing in the world. It's like you got to watch her running down the the aisle. It's it's, it's like I mean, I'm watching this going like, but it later you know you know you know why she was wearing the giant heels right? So she could well that's fine. She can put the giant heels on when she's going to do the face to face later on. Yeah. With uh, Jade. Jade. But, I mean, she didn't need to run to the ring. No. It looked like she had two broken legs. Yeah, it was it was as awkward as awkward could be having her do a run-in in those. It's like, you're doing a run-in, we're tennis shoes. And, I mean, here's the thing also. It's like, if you're, con- you know, whatever, whatever, concerned about size. She's twice the size of Zelina Vega. She ends up saving Zelina Vega, and she's standing there. And Zelina Vega looks like she's freaking four feet tall next to Charlotte Flair in those heels that makes her whatever, you know, 6'2 or 3 or something. I I don't know how much, you know. um, I mean, it's got to... How many inches do you think those heels were? Five? At least. I mean, they were freaking... It was amazing. Then we had quite a segment. So first, Triple H comes out, and he puts over Adam Pearce for doing a great job as a GM. And, uh, well, well he's he, not didn't, he didn't say a he's GM. He's the authority figure. He called him the authority figure. It's like they wouldn't actually call him the GM, but now he's well, been call, promoted it, to the it, GM was, of Raw. Isn't his thing um, WWE official Adam Pierce? That well, was now his, he's the GM of Raw. He's, he's been promoted. He's the GM of Raw, yes. And then Hunter says, well, that leads me to who will be the GM of SmackDown. And he gets interrupted by Dom. And so Dom's out there. He's getting all the heat. And Hunter says, I can't hear you. Please keep it down. He's getting all this heat. And Hunter finally says, wow, I always thought they were pumping in that noise. I didn't realize how loud it was until you were out here. So he says, you're listening, you're yelling at the wrong people. Pierce is the GM of Raw. You should be talking to the GM of SmackDown. It's uh, Nick Aldis. It's the most anticlimactic <laughs> announcement. I know. And like, the, cl- the crowd's just like, huh? And, and Nick so, Aldis is out, he's, he's out there. He comes like through he- the crowd. Well, he's no, he's, he's actually out there at ringside. And the people don't really know who he is because, you know, some of the people I'm sure do, but most of the people don't because it's not like he was ever, you know, I mean, he was an impact and everything like that. And I guess he was an NWA, but, you know, I I think a large percentage of the audience didn't even know who he was. And he came in the ring and, I mean, look, the guy, the guy's a good speaker. He's a very good speaker. And he actually had a great line where Dom's Dom's still freaking out and he goes, it's nice to, he goes, uh, he goes, Dom, you know, it's nice to meet you. I'm a big fan of your dad. Yeah. And his fucking timing was so good. The crowd yeah. popped huge for that line. Yeah. yeah he, and so he, he said, you know, when Jey Uso went to Raw, that meant SmackDown gets a new talent. And uh, Dom says, nobody cares. And uh, Aldis says, well, here's who this new star is. And it is Kevin Owens yeah. has been drafted. Now, granted, the this, this is meaningless. It doesn't matter what brand you're on because everyone's just everywhere. But they did basically break up Sammy and Kevin by doing this. They did, Yes, they've broken them up, yes. So uh, he comes out, he gave Dom the stunner, and now he is on SmackDown, which made As a singles guy and Roman Reigns very angry. Yeah, so him and Roman Reigns can go at it again. So, yep. uh, yeah. And look, I mean, he's one of the better opponents for Roman Reigns. 
You know, so that's that's. Although good. he has brought up that Roman has beaten him five times. At least, well, he's going to beat him again. Yes. Chelsea and Piper met with Aldis, and uh, they said their titles were cursed. And he said, I, I, I'm sorry, i got to talk to somebody else right now, and it's Charlotte. And this was absolutely bizarre. He says, Charlotte, I saw what happened at Fastlane. If that ref hadn't been incompetent, you'd be the champion right now. And Charlotte Flair responds with, well, the referee's, the referee's decision is final. <laughs> like, he's giving you another match. What are you doing? Yeah. And he said, well, next week you get a rematch with EO. And then she turns around and there's Jade and they have a stare down. And looks like that might be Mania or something. Yeah, it like might that. be Mania. It's not going to be earlier than that, probably. We had Jane Cody versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory for the tag team titles. And of course, uh, they just kept sending Grayson out of the ring. They hit all their moves on Theory, they pinned him. And then they uh, were leaving. It was and a standard, basically standard match. It was a nothing happening match. I mean, there was. I mean, it was fine. It was fine. There's nothing was, wrong with it. Just there. Yeah. And then Cody and Jay are leaving. They're running to Jimmy and Soul on the ramp. And then Ray, Roman comes out. And so Cody and Jay have the stare down with Jimmy and Solo. And then Roman comes and has the big stare down with Cody. So, so they're they're definitely they're going that, that direction. One. They're definitely teasing that one. Yeah, yeah. Vince is out. You know. Yeah. He's out. Yeah, but no matter what. It, but you know what? Like, the strike is ending, and, uh, you know, a lot of things have been backlogged, and if that strike ends, um, Dwayne may not have a lot of time. But, I mean, if Dwayne wants to do it, Dwayne's going to get it. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter who's in charge of creative. But if, you know, I mean, he'll, he'll get it if he wants it, but he may not have the time for it, and, uh, you know, so. They're clearly going with the idea that, they have to have a backup plan, and Cody's that backup plan. Now, the main event was L.A. Knight and Solo Sokoa. And, uh, man, early on, these guys could not get on the same page. And then we got a bunch of nerve holds. And finally, L.A. made his comeback, and the crowd got into that because they liked chanting, yeah. And Jimmy hit ringside. John Cena ran down to take him out. Cena gave him an AA in the middle of the ring in front of the referee, which, of course, is not a DQ. And then uh, Solo hit Cena with the spike. L.A. hit his finish on Solo, got the pin. And then Roman laid out so, uh, Knight with the spear. So Saudi Arabia, Roman Reigns, L.A. Knight for that yeah. title. I mean, the one thing with L.A. Knight um, you know, with, with, and everything like that is like uh, he has, I mean, he has the charisma and he's the hot thing right now. But, I mean. You're not going to have a lot of great matches. You're going to have decent matches. Yes. And this match was a decent match, but like for a TV main event, you know, compared to most TV main events that we see, this was, was you know, in the bottom percentile, you know, like, you know, probably what bottom 25 percentile, you know, in the sense it wasn't, there was like nothing much to it. They just did a couple standard things. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it. But, the, you know, I mean, and you know what? I, I, I should I should also the crowd was not into it that much until the end. Now they were very into the end when L.A. Knight started, you know, going you know where he was about to win and everything like that. I mean they love him, and and all that. But like at the the first several minutes of the match, it's like the crowd wasn't really that into it either. And I was like really kind of surprised because at the um, pay per view, you know, the crowd was pretty much into that entire match. But that was also seen in the ring too. So. Um, you know, but it doesn't matter. I mean, he's over. So, and that's all that counts. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, 
As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.